To me, Vermont represents the really strong connection we have as people to the animals and all of nature that surrounds us. We, if you go around in a town, you will find that most people there will have some sort of pet, whether it be a dog, a cat, a gerbil, a ferret, anything along that. I personally have a cat. My cat's name is Gandalf. We named him Gandalf because he is completely white, and if you've seen the Lord of the Rings movies, or read any of the books, Gandalf the wizard comes back as a completely white wizard. So that's where we got that idea. I've had my cat Gandalf since I was about five years old, and I love him dearly. Uh, we also have the fish, which are right Thanks. behind me. We don't have that many, but we take really good care of them, and it's turned into more of a plant tank than anything. Connections with animals are, in my opinion, very strong through Vermonters. I know in my family we are we care a lot about animals. Uh, we take very good care of our pets, yeah, and whenever we see any other animals living in harsh conditions or in very poor shape, we always either act upon it or, if we can't act upon it, we feel very sad inside, and I'm sure many Vermonters do. If you travel pretty much anywhere in Vermont, you don't have to go far from homes to find a farm or anything along those lines to see examples of animals. I do not live on a farm, I live in a very urban area, but we do our part to serve the animals and take care of the animals. We have bird feeders outside all around our house, and we're one of the few people on our street that do, but it's a nice treat to walk by in the afternoon on my way home from school and listen to the birds chirping in the yard. I get to see them flying around all the time, eating the bird seed. I even see the squirrels stealing the bird seed. I chose to talk about the connection between animals and people, and not only animals but nature, because many things in my life have sparked the idea. I live around animals. My grandparents have had have lived on a farm for I don't know how long. They've recently moved to New York, but throughout all of my childhood they lived on a farm in West Fairley, Vermont. And Throughout my childhood, we would go down there, and I would help them do chores. They had donkeys, goats, chickens. They had and still have two dogs. They have two cats as well. It was a really nice thing for someone who, someone like me, who lives in a more urban area to go out to a farm and get to be a little closer to animals. Being on the farm certainly sparked some emotion towards animals and nature for me because my grandparents are very old-fashioned, they do not like modern technology very much, so I was very in touch with the woods and the animals around me. I did not just sit inside and watch TV because I didn't have the option. Instead, I would go outside and wander the woods with my brother. I would say hi to the various animals around the property. I would take a nap out in the sun. Not only was it the animals, but my grandparents also used to harvest sap from trees to make maple syrup. And maple syrup is a wonderful thing to have. I would help go out and collect sap buckets and pour it into the big 50 gallon drums which would go down to the sugar house and we'd each get to sip some of the fresh warm maple. And that all came from nature. I didn't think about it at the time, but now that I do, I can realize deeper how much, how in touch they were with nature and how in touch it made me with nature. <laughs> well, since I was little, I've always loved horses, so I guess I'd have to say horses, but it's a really an impossible choice. 
I guess uh, I guess I'd have to say a frog. This is a great time of year too, because uh, yeah, frogs are peeping. They teach us a lot about life and about acceptance, about loyalty. They're other, but I don't think they're any less than we are. Uh, animals, uh, they just are what they are. They're, they have a certain kind of nature, a certain kind of... They're all different. I mean, they're individuals, but at the same time they're... they're they're just who they are, you know. Very definitely. Uh, yeah, just uh, in many ways, I think anyone who has an animal uh, makes a commitment. And uh, we certainly have made a commitment with our donkeys. With, I mean, we've had Sophie for 20 almost 30 years that we've had her and uh, it's defined our life to a large extent you know we have to be here for her most of the time uh, we have to invest time and uh, money in taking care of her so yeah it's really changed our lives I think our first uh, well, Lucky, the animal, the dog that we found on the interstate. And Julius, a orange cat that your father rescued and that we ended up taking care of. Sophie, for sure. Zoe, our dog, made a big impact on our lives. Would you say that animals have impacted your life? Oh, yes. They've been central. Yep. Doesn't I don't know what I'd do without them. Um, when I was little and my grandfather had a farm in New York State, as a matter of fact, um, and he had horses and I learned to ride. He taught me to ride. And so I learned on a pony, a Welsh pony named Merlin. He had a big impact. He was quite stubborn. I graduated from him to a beautiful Copper Bay uh, thoroughbred cross who was quite tall, quite old, and very energetic. And I rode him. And it was uh, so, those two. And then Headlight, who was very tall. When I was first put on him, I was so little that my legs wouldn't go down the saddle. They went out straight like that, <laughs> straight across. I thought I was on a mountain. <laughs> it was great. There's a, a sense in which we, or maybe it's like a distant memory in which we were one with the animals, that we were on a, uh, you might say, friends with the animals. And that somehow we've lost that sense, but not entirely. We still have that sense that uh, we're related in some important way. Yeah. Well, our DNA is only a couple of things off. I mean, we're related. Like the quote says, we're all related. And I think it's very important to acknowledge that. Like I had stated previously, I have gained a lot more emotion for animals and nature around me. One of the main things that has sparked more emotion towards animals is there, on the street next to mine, there is a miniature horse that these people have had. The horse receives benign neglect. The people do not mean any harm to the animal, but they do not do the best for it. Growing up, partially on my grandparents' farm allowed me to know because I helped deal with the donkeys it helped me to understand what it means to raise an animal similar to a horse. They do provide it with hay 
It has a not so suitable pen though, and they do not pick up any of its manure. I used to go walking on the trail behind my street with my dad, or alone, or with anyone, and I would always pass by this horse and feel upset whenever I saw it, because it, during the winter, as you can see, it it looks like a perfectly fine place to be in. It looks like solid ground, there's its little tin can shelter, but it is completely different in the spring. I remember one or two years ago walking by and seeing the horse stuck on this little, little piece of land. It was probably one, maybe two yards in diameter, and it was just standing there. And because of the area the pen is in, it is just total swamp when all the snow melts and the rain comes in from spring. And so the horse no longer has solid ground to be on. Instead, it has little, little bits of land, and then it has to constantly be trudging through water, which is very bad on the hooves. I was honestly surprised to go back this winter, this past week, and see that the horse was still alive. I was very grateful, though, that it was alive. I expected the horse to either have passed away or been taken somewhere else, but the people have kept it in what seems to be good shape, but its shelter and little habitat that it's forced to live in is not so great. My grandmother is one of the people in my family who have one of the strongest connections with the animals she's either grown up with or raised or just encountered in one way or another. Because of this love for animals, she has created her own books. She is an artist and an author. She, she prints her own books and pictures and creates little stories about various animals. An example of that is they have a cat named Clifford, or we call him Cliff for short. He, was a, he is a small orange cat who, when they found him, he was at their old farm in West Fairley and he was just huddled underneath their crabapple tree. All of his teeth were rotted, he had matted fur, and he was starving. They took him in, took him to the vet. Sadly, he had to lose all of his teeth, but now if you go and see him, he is one of the happiest cats you'll ever meet. Despite the fact that he has no teeth, he is still very playful and energetic. He now has actually a big belly instead of being skin and bone. I believe that nature and animals in Vermont and in other states and countries too, that the animals and nature are very important and dear to most people living there. I know a lot of people that really value either going hunting in the woods, just going for a nice walk in the woods, Personally, I really enjoy walking through the woods when it's nice and quiet. That was one thing I really liked about my grandparents' old farm, is I could go in the woods and there wouldn't be the sound of cars rushing by. Nature is one of my greatest values in life because of this fact. It has provided me with happiness, it's provided me with a place for solitude. My cat is another great example. He makes me very happy whenever I see him. We patronize the animals for their incompleteness, for their tragic fate of having taken form so far below ourselves, and therein we err, and greatly err. For the animal shall not be measured by man. In a world older and more complete than ours, they move finished and complete gifted with extensions of the senses we have lost or never attained, living by voices we shall never hear. They are not brethren. They are not underlings. They are other nations, caught with ourselves in the net of life and time.